So I'm not gonna have no spark, no pulse, no fuel pressure. So I went in using his tactic and I checked everything. I says, you know what? I said, one thing I have to understand about any car, I don't care what kind of computer it is, if you have no communication, just baseline it, it's either gonna be, you have a pointer? Is there a pointer up here? Ooh, green. Green's good. Green is better than red. It does. It goes further. All right, so anyway, you want, you want to make sure that you're checking your powers and grounds. It hasn't changed in many, many years. And I used to use the old uh, Symitex system. It was interface technology, and we checked everything at the pro controller. So that's where you want to be, because you're going to cut out all the open circuits. If, you know, you're checking a fuse here. Meanwhile, you have a broken wire from the fuse to the processor. So just go right to the horse's mouth, not to the horse's butt. So you're going to check for battery feed. And battery feed is what keeps the computer alive and also provides memory for things it's learned. So that's the most important thing. And the other thing, too, is you want to check all your ground feeds. If there's one, two, three, four, you have to check every ground feed. Every ground feed has a purpose on that controller. I'll give you an example. One car I had checked had no, fuel, had no fuel pulse. The injectors weren't working. I, checked, I thought I checked all the grounds. I checked the power feeds, and there was no fuel pulse. Condemned the computer. Turned out the one broken ground fed the driver for the injectors. So each ground is dedicated for a certain job. You'll never know which ground is for what. It'll just be labeled on the, on the computer ground, but you're not sure what that ground is for. So you have to check every single ground. So and the other thing, too, is ignition feed. Uh, it's, it's a a way that we wake up the computer, because the computer's sleeping, and you wake them up. Now, this can be done either through a direct uh, relay, where a relay is energized by the ignition switch, or it can be done simply by a fuse. So I said to this guy, let me just check all the powers and grounds. And he was checking the power. He goes, well, I checked all the power and grounds. I'm like, well, let me see what you did. He's showing me. I'm like, yeah, but you're using a, a logic probe. And you ever see the, the power probe? You have the green light and the red light. Now, green light means good ground. Red light means good power. And you see the voltage on the screen? It doesn't mean much. Because how many amps does it take for that LED to light? What do you think? 20 milliamps? 0 0.02 of an amp? What well, if that processor needs 300 milliamps to even power up? So you want to use something like a test light with a bulb, which can load it to 300 milliamps. And you know you have a, a decent power and ground feed, but you better know where you're going to put that. You touch that test light to a driver circuit and go, I think that's the power feed. You'll destroy the computer. I made something that's even more interesting. I took my test light to the next level. I put a halogen bulb in it, which draws close to four amps. And I know I have a good power and ground feed. But the thing is, I was still in testing uh, stages with it because I, I left it on too long one time on one car and it actually melted the casing. The casing melted. I was plastic casing the test light. But it, it loads the circuit more. It's just something you want to do. Just get a little halogen bulb, stick in your test light. But again, but make sure you know where you're putting that puppy. I think I dropped my mic. There it is. So with that, I checked all the powers and grounds. So I got a basic wiring diagram. Pull this out of Mitchell. So I checked my, on, on connector number X60001, I found my main ground feeds, which I checked. I, my terminal 30 which is battery feed. Terminal 87 came off a relay feed, right through the DME relay. But the thing is, the computer is the one that ground the relay. I'm like, when I turn on the key, why isn't the computer not ground this relay? So I said, well, let me give it a helping hand. Maybe the driver's bad inside the ECM. So I ground the relay, I got power here, and still wouldn't communicate. Now, understand there's another connector, which is connector X60005, which also has a ground in it, all right? So I checked these two other grounds here, just to make sure that I'm checking all the grounds, not just three, three grounds. The thing, too, is you've got to make sure that you're checking the CAN communication lines, because you could have a computer that's getting all its proper power and grounds, but it could be cut off from the rest of the world because maybe it has a severed uh, CAN wire. So you just don't know. So I went over all this wire, and I'm like, you know what? Everything seems fine. He goes, yeah, no, John, I checked everything, too. And I, I didn't understand the time... Where's the ignition feed? I'm like, maybe the diagram's wrong. Diagrams can be wrong. So I look at all that. I'm like, I'm looking at every single pin. I don't see ignition feed. I just don't see it. I couldn't reason with it. So I said, you know what? I checked everything I could. Maybe the processor is bad, because he came in, I came in for a second opinion, right? So I'm giving a second opinion. I'm like, you know what? Let's keep operating cross-load, because 
That ECM is tw like $1,200. We can go to carpart.com, C-A-R-dash-part.com. Let's see if we get a used one. Let's see what happens. So we get this computer, put it in, guess what? That wasn't it. I said, you know what? My tactics are a little wrong here. I just, I wasn't thinking. What I should have done, I should have went out to the whole network. It's like you're, you're like, like you're going in a room and you join a party. You have all these people in the party. And let's say that you're over there to pick up a chick and you say, hey, how you doing? She's not talking to you. Just, maybe there's a problem, communication problem. So you walk away and Joe takes a shot. He's talking, right? Also, she starts talking to him. Maybe she doesn't. If she's not talking to nobody, there's something wrong with her. Maybe she's not alive. <laughs> so the thing here is you need to go out to the network and talk to every computer on that network to find out if they have the same problem. Because when you plug your scan tool in, you're a node. You joined the party. So I saw this code said, output wake up line PT can. What the heck is that? I don't, I don't even know what a PT can is. I know, a, I know what a can network is, but PT can, wake up line, this stuff was a little beyond me. I'm like, I've, I just didn't, never ran across this. So, so when you pull a code, I pull, this by, I pull this code from the safety and gateway module, by the way. He's one of the head dudes, and he said, hey, look, I'm, I'm telling you right now, there's, there's a problem here. And you need to understand what code definition is and code criteria. So look, I can't crash this, I can't crash course this here right now. I gotta go home and do some digging. I have to understand what this code is all about, what is it all for, what this PT can, PT can is all about, because now I'm in a learning group. Now I'm married, the ring is on, and I will find this problem. I'll do a lot of digging. So I found out that the, the PT can, these are all the networks that are available on BMW cars from E31 series down to E87. And I found that the PT can started back in 2001. What is this all about? It's used on E60 through e, E87 models, this PT can. So, and what I learned is, it's this private network, a whole private network with these specific computers on it, which are dealing with the powertrain, powertrain computers, such as the engine, DME, uh, the transmission, EGS, uh, DSC, which is the ABS system, SMG, which is electronic manual transmission, which uh, that's, a, that's a crazy one right there. No clutch, manual transmission. I had one last week, I had to program that puppy. But it wouldn't shift. Want to know why? The hood was open. That's a nice strategy to learn. The hood was open. Close the hood, it'll start shifting. Trust me. I don't understand that one. A lot of things don't understand, but you learn as you go. I just figured I'd throw that one in because it happened last week to me. But you see this little guy here? This little guy here is the wake-up line. Wake-up line? What the heck is that all about? This wake-up line, oh, and by the way, we talk about acronyms, there's a lot of those acronyms I don't know. Because I don't know every acronym. Right? Like here, ACC, Active Cruise Control. AFS, Active Steering. AHL, Adaptive Cornering Light. ARS, Active Anti-Roll Bar. It may or may not have these options. But you should really go to all these guys to see if they're all out. And in fact, look, the DME, the Digital Mobile Electronics, Dynamic Stability Control, Electronic Transmission, none of these guys talked. I never, I never even checked. I went with his thing where he says, hey, I'm doing this, I'm micromanaging right here, I'm just checking one computer. I'm like, you know what, dude? We probably should have checked all the computers and put together the whole story. So all these computers, and nothing too is, when it comes to acronyms, you better know what they are for a year make model, because they change. You know, BCM, a GM car, body control module. Now you're working on a Volvo. You're like, where's the ABS module? I can't find it nowhere in the menu. Dude, BCM. Yeah, BCM, body control, no, brake control module. So it's different from one manufacturer to the next. So you need to look up these acronyms. You have no choice. So what I learned up about this wake-up line, they incorporate the wake-up line actually into the PT CAN network, okay? So it'll run a three-wire system, not a, not a two-wire system, three-wire system. And what it does is it wakes up the computer. So there's a wake-up line going to all these controllers. And when you stick the key in the ignition, right? The mobilized system says, hey, safety and gateway module, how you doing? He goes, how you doing? He goes, wake everybody up. Tell them to come to the party. And this is not like a 12-volt wire. It's kind of like, wakey, 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 wakes every computer up. They're actually in sleep mode. 
just recently, I just built a whole new computer system back in my truck. I'm still working on it. And my, my buddy here, Robert, goes to me, hey, John, why don't you just leave the computer on while you're driving? Yeah, but I want to ruin my hard drive, dude. I don't want this to be spinning as I'm driving. Can you, the way I drive? The last time Dave was on my truck, he goes, John, I need to get a, a, my own airbag with two pull cords because the way you drive, dude, is a little crazy. So it's okay. So I said, I said, you know what? I said, let's take a look at this thing and see what's going on. Now, this PT can line, I was saying, who's in charge here? So the SCM set a code that there was something wrong with this line. And it put, these computers are actually in sleep mode. And they can wake up anytime they want. So you can have the key off, and, and there can be initialization to wake up all these computers. So I'm going a little further with this thing. And I get a wiring diagram out from Mitchell, and I'm going through all the guys on this wake-up line. Because understand one thing. If this wake-up line is shorted, nobody wakes up. There's no way to wake these dudes up. So we have a short on that line. So it's just like a shorted bus line. You treat it the same way. But the problem is there's a lot of players. We have a digital computer. You can start unplugging all these computers one at a time at, at the extremities. You have a, a DME. You have the adaptive, uh, you have the active steering. You have the uh, active cruise control, the ABS system. But something caught my attention. Now there's the CAS unit, battery sensor. Battery sensor? Is that a computer? Why would it be going to a battery sensor on a wake-up line? So this, this sparked my interest because I didn't know about a battery sensor. I know, I know about all these controllers because I've been working on them for many, many years. But that one sparked my interest. Do a little more research, right? Come to find out, there's a company called, uh, I think, Pella or Della. I'm not, I forgot the name of the company now, but Pella. Pella. Oh, see? I was getting close. I had the E-L-L-A -L -L there. Just the first letter was off. But Pella actually made this smart, not so smart, negative battery cable. And it actually is a sensor that will actually give information to the whole PT CAN system. Upon turning on the key, it'll actually wake up and go, oh, oh, I'm awake too. How are you guys all doing? I have, do I have information for you? I can tell you the, char the, the, the charge of the battery right now, where it's at. I can give information on the aging of that battery. How long it's been here? How long it's been around? And then you can accordingly do what you like once the car starts up to adjust the charging rate of that alternator. And what happened here, and also, you ever get a BMW, you turn on the key, you try to crank it, nothing happens? You're like, oh, you get that click, 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 click. The guy's like, oh, what's going on here? The starter must be screwed up, right? Meanwhile, that battery sensor will say, don't crank the engine. There's not enough there. The capacity isn't there. So understand, when you turn the key on, that battery sensor gives information instantaneously. So I'm like, maybe I unplug this puppy. Car starts up like this. Oh, my God. Oh, my. What, what am I missing here? What happened in the old days? Just turn the key on. You get ignition feed to the computer. And then everybody wakes up because they all have their own ignition feed. Now they're sending a wake-up call to all the computers. This has been around since 2003. Now, where was I when this all happened? I was probably sleeping. They, he didn't wake me up. So, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing about this stuff is that you could miss a class and you'll miss information. So it's staying in the class and continuing to learn. You lay dormant in sleep mode and no one wakes up. Hey, hey Joe, I think you really need to go to class. It's been like a year, dude. It's been a year. So this little puppy here took out the whole system. And I got news for you too. I'm told they can do something else. It could, it could bleed, because there's a power feed line going to two, because it has to be fed as a sensor. It can bleed a minute amount of voltage into that wake-up line and keep all the computers awake, even though the key's off, and kill the battery. Go figure that one out. The guy goes, my battery, my car keeps dying overnight, because everyone's they're having a party. They're partying through the night. They're having a good time. So this guy here, it's not so smart cable. And here's another thing, too. You change a battery on his, on his BMW, what are you going to do? You're going to put it in? It'll get destroyed. Why? What? Register. You have to re-register the battery. Go to, hey, go to say, everyone, hey, oh, hey, everybody here in the PT can? New guy on board. So they start over. And the battery sensor has to now start all over with giving the information because all this information is logged into the computer. If you change a battery brand new on, this, on these BMWs with the PT can system, 
you will, you will destroy that battery. It doesn't know the age of that. It thinks that it's the old battery. So I just thought this was a very interesting case. I had to present it. I, I says, gee, gee, man, I got to present this case because it blew my mind. I didn't know about it. So now there's a whole new thing in the mix. Power feed, ground feed, and wake up call. It could be this system or it could be ignition. And G's giving me one of these how you doings over here. But uh, I just hope you enjoyed that story. I'm back in the mix. I will have a class later in the year to excite you guys. And uh, that's about it.